Hello everyone, welcome to the third pre-recording of the Graphics Programming Virtual Meetup. This meetup follows the Berlin Code of Conduct. The topic today is chapter 9 and 10 of the Retracing in When We Can book that we started two weeks ago. Last time we implemented diffuse material, and today we will add two more types of material into our path tracer. The first type of material we will add is metal. Before we add any uh, materials, first we need an abstract representation of the material. There are two ways to achieve this goal. One is to have a movable material that have all kinds of parameters, and then, then we will have a really complicated scatter function that dispatch on uh, depend on different conditions. Or, for example, we can have Disney BRDF, and the the solution used by the book, by contrast, is to have an abstract material representation, and then all of our material need to implement this interface. We have a uh, we have a material class that have one virtual function scatter that takes a ray and then it returns whether we scatter uh, the ray or not because sometimes we just absorb the ray and then and then also give us back the attenuation of the ray and the and the direction of uh, and the output ray, the output scattered ray. The other thing we want to do is inside our heat record, we need to store a material now because we need to use this information when we do our scattering. And with all that setup, our sphere as a hitable object, they store one material. And when we hit, when we hit the sphere, we just return that the material on the surface of the sphere. And Lambertian, we already implemented Lambertian material, so Basically, we will just copy and paste the previous code into here, into the scattered function. Now let's talk about metals. But not all materials are like Lambertian, which is perfectly diffused material. By contrast, most materials uh, like metals have some kind of almost like mirrors reflection. I say almost because, because even though they are metals, they are usually a little bit of rough, but we can model them as perfect mirror reflection. And if our input ray is this V, our output ray is this uh, red ray. And this red ray is exactly V plus B plus B. And so now we need to know what this b is. And this b vector can be, it, it is uh, always point to the normal direction. And its magnitude is uh, this v dot this normal. That's all the information we want. So we can put the mass here. Our, our out reflection ray is, uh, our input ray plus 2b, and our b is uh, v dot n. Notice the minus sign here because, because we have uh, uh, like v dot n is a negative number, so we need to use negative sign to get back a positive number, and then times n to get the actual output ray. With that uh, equation, we can just 
implemented it in the code. This reflect function is really common. So in shading languages such as GLSL, this is a built-in. But since we are writing a software retracer, we need to implement it by hand. And uh, with all of that information, we can implement our metal uh, material. Where our first, we just get a reflected direction by using this reflect uh, function. And then our scattered rays just start from uh, our hit point, and then the direction is the reflected direction. We also set the attenuation to our video, which is the color of the metal. And we return true if the dot product of the scattered direction and normal is positive, which means our scattered rays point outward, not point back into the sphere. So for the attenuation here, another way to do that is to let the metal absorb some of the rays. But the way we do it here is just uh, have a attenuation carried uh, to the ray because in, in the cases of we have a really few samples, uh, like discarding some rays is not a good way of doing stuff. And then, then in our recolor function, we can just call uh, this material pointer dot scatter, which will dynamically dispatch into whatever material we have, and then the and then our final color is just attenuation times the recursively find the recolor. Notice we only have indirect light here. As we said before, we are doing a pass trace strategy, so I just want to reiterate here. We don't have another direct light term here. We only have indirect light. And then we can make a scene with a bunch of uh, metal material in it. In this case, we add two metal ones here and another one is here. And we still keep once uh, the two Lambertian you know, plastic-like sphere in here and on the ground. But as we said before, even metal have some kind of fastness. So not all metal, uh, metals are not mirrors, basically. Well, not perfect mirrors. Even our real mirrors are not perfect. So we need we add this uh, fastness term, which is a number from zero to one. We clamp it to the upper bound to one, and then just uh, write a rendering unisphere function times the fastness to decide where our ray will land, and and so if our initial initial inter uh, scattered point is here, after we add that random uh, adjustment, it can be here, it can be here. And if the, if the fastness is larger, you can see this unit first sphere is much larger. And so th this way we can see our, we have a lot more flexibility and then the final result will be fuzzier. We add, we add some fastness into both of the materials. The left one is 0 0.3 and the right one is 1, which is the maximum of fastness. Oh, I do not put a picture here, though I should. So sorry about that. But the result should be that 
this sphere gets really fuzzy and this sphere gets somewhat fuzzy but not as fuzzy as this one and then next topic is the dielectric materials before we talk about anything with uh, transparency we need to talk about snail's law if you still remember optics from your high school in snail's law we have we have this uh, input ray and this output ray and then we have we have this angle between those rays and the surface normal and then the reflectance uh our refraction index then we just use uh then we just use this equation to describe the relationship between those two vectors snail's law is bad bidirectional just like brdf when we say brdf b is stand for bidirectional which means uh if we can negate the direction of this ray and this ray so so the same same law works both if this is the input ray and this is the output ray or if this is the input ray and this is the output ray that's why we have this double arrow at at the both end of the uh, vector to just indicate that it is bidirectional to use the snail's law first uh, we can decompose uh, the output ray into the vertical and horizontal components and through some tr uh, trigonometry we get we get this uh, is the vertical component of the output ray and then for for the parallel component we just use a Pythagoras theorem with all of that math we can get this refract function this refract function is also really common uh, so Uh, so uh, in GISL or HISL, in shading languages, this is a primitive. And then in our dielectric material, we will just use that uh, refract, refract uh, function to calculate the refracted degree. Notice, notice here when we Calculate the uh, the uh, refraction index. We need to make sure if it is front face or back face. So if we are inside the surface, in inside a sphere with high refraction index, or if we are in the air, basically. So at least in this code does not support. Uh, material materials with different refraction index intersect with each other. For example, a glass ball in the water. This code do not support that. It only support air. And with all that setup, we can just add uh, some dielectric materials into our code. and we have this picture which looks almost right but actually we are doing something wrong so the problem is snail law not always have a solution we call that condition total internal reflection so when when an angle between between the light and the surface is too small we will not have a solution for the snail's law and it will always reflect instead of refract and we are not considering that uh, situation yet but since c++ will just 
let's uh, just give some our infinite number so we will probably get a black spot and then it get uh, kind of accumulated so we didn't see anything obvious but when we when I do this in OCaml when I don't add that check I will get a get an ex runtime exception because OCaml do check if we if the arithmetics gets uh, infinite numbers or none or not. So we need some sanity check to make sure our make sure we if we are in the total internal reflection condition we will just reflect otherwise we reflect and with all that set up uh, we also changed one of the material back into metal with all that set up we have the correct uh, look sphere but one thing we haven't considered is the Fresnel effect. When current, currently our, our uh, surface just always refract the ray when it can. But instead, instead in real life, uh, uh, the electric surface will sometimes refract, but sometimes reflect depend on the angle and when the angle is smaller it will ref the reflection will become stronger and when the angle is larger it's almost totally reflection or refraction sorry you can see the reflection here is stronger almost no reflection here it's similarly reflection as distance is a lot stronger so we need to consider this effect there are very complicated equations for Fresnel, but a very commonly used approximation in graphics is a Schlick approximation because it is very simple, as in this code. And if you, so it is basically interpolation between between R zero and one. Uh, depend on the angle and when when our cosine approach approach zero this will converge uh, this function will converge into uh, one really quick rapidly so, so So as a result, we can have, have this reflect probability to see if we want to ref, uh, reflection or refraction. And then with that, we can, of course, just check it with a random number from 0 to 1 and decide if we want to reflect or not. And the last thing this book does is to add one additional material that is concentric with uh, this this sphere, but sorry, it's a above sphere, but it have negative it have negative uh, radius. So it so this is a trick the book used to emulate hollow sphere when you have a hole in the center of another sphere. As a result, we have this image. And notice if you look at the surface carefully, you can kind of see the Fresnel effect in action where the surface of the sphere have very strong reflection, but in the center of the sphere, there are almost no reflection. Thank you.